Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to compare DECA to testosterone um, and see which is stronger in terms of muscle building. So DECA, also known as nandrolone decanoate, uh, well the DECA part is just the ester they use, um, nandrolone is the actual active co compound. Um, so this video is more out of interest but I'll be doing another video on the safety profile of DECA in the future. Uh, this is just more in terms of which results in better muscle gain. And for those who are more experienced with steroids and stuff, you probably already know the answer, and that would be DECA, because, well, just in terms of its... Um, it's commonly reported to bind stronger to the receptors and be more anabolic than androgenic. Uh, than testosterone um, because it was literally uh, developed in order to be more anabolic and less androgenic and this is seen in this study here where they look at the receptor binding properties of the two and they found that in tissues without 5-alpha reductase, so the tissues that don't convert testosterone to DHT, um, nandrolone seems to have a better binding affinity and a stronger effect there and in tissues like the prostate where 5-alpha reductase does play a role uh, nandrolone isn't as strong there. Um, so how do they compare in real life? Because we know that nandrolone binds more, uh, more strongly but how do they compare in real life? Um, so first I just wanted to look at this study um, that said bodybuilders body composition, the effect of nandrolone decanoate, just because the study design is really good and um, it just kind of looks at a real, kind of a real life situation because these are guys who have already trained only four have used steroids in the past but they already have experience and now they're using steroids and let's see how much muscle they gain. Um, so just remember they have already trained, so the results won't be as drastic as, let's say, employing this in someone who was hypogonadal, who had never trained and started to train with a proper diet and things. So this is an RCT, again, just poking fun at the anabolic doc for not saying there, uh, for saying there aren't many or aren't many good ones, this is a pretty decent one. Um, I like the study design a lot. Um, so essentially they had one group where they used 200 milligrams of nandrolone decanoate for eight weeks, uh, so 200 every week, and the other was placebo. So they only used um, the compounds for eight weeks, which is a bit, or the compound for eight weeks, which is a bit troublesome because the decanoate ester tends to only really kick in around the eighth week or twelfth week because it's, it's a longer acting ester. Um, but anyway, we'll still look at the results. And they looked at the body composition um, seven weeks after stopping nandrolone. Uh, and nandrolone tends to stay in the system for about a month, so this would give adequate washout time to see if the results could be sustained uh, post-withdrawal of nandrolone. So let's look at the results. Um, as you can see here, uh, nandrolone resulted in a significant increase in body mass, and that was a 2.2 kilogram gain in um, uh, in the nandrolone group, and uh, this was sustained. Well, uh, quite a significant amount was kept after the fo after fourteen weeks, so seven weeks since stopping, because um, there was uh, there was about a kilogram one point six kilogram gain. So that was probably more lean tissue, and what they lost was water weight. But they did look at the fat-free mass also, and that was very significant. There was an increase in that from 63 to 65 kilograms, or 65.7, that's like 2.6 here in this case. Um, and they managed to keep, they lost about 0.7 of that, but managed to keep quite a substantial amount. They also did look at total body water gain and there was quite a bit of that which nandrolone if you don't know does result in quite a bit of water retention. 
but um, this normalized after stopping nandrolone and they still managed to keep quite a lot of size so they probably just lost water weight. So it just shows how potent nandrolone is. This is an eight week trial which isn't a great time period and these individuals have already been training and some have already used steroids. So and they only use 200 milligrams. So this just goes to show how potent it is at such a short duration even, because for those who don't know, two kilograms is quite significant, especially if it's lean mass not, and not water mass. So the issue is trying to compare nandrolone to testosterone because the study duration was so short and you need testosterone to be used in the same, the same ester and same duration and then you can compare the two because it, that just it, that just lays the ground for a more equal comparison but a lot of studies are uh, using testosterone at a similar dose but for a longer duration like 16 to 20 weeks and sometimes six months and they use an ester uh, like an anthate so I tried to look for studies where they compared the two and then I stumbled across um, a study where they uh, actually compared the two in AIDS patients and they, there were two studies with literally identical methods but they weren't the same study and they had a large sample size and they compared nandrolone to testosterone so let's see what they found. Well, first of all, let's describe what the uh, method they used was. So they actually, they compared nandrolone to testosterone. So they used nandrolone at 75 milligrams a week. It was actually 150 milligrams every two weeks. And then the testosterone, they said um, it was an anthate, but it was actually sustenon. So I like the fact that it was actually sustenon because that does have a decanoate ester, although it does have short-acting short esters, sustenon's results tend to be uh, displayed later. Just, um, uh, I've just noticed that. Um, so again, don't read the ab abstract because they said testosterone and anthate, and they didn't use an anthate. But anyway, they use, so they use an androlone at 150 every two weeks and testosterone at 250 milligrams every two weeks, and they did this for 12 weeks Again, they didn't use comparable doses, but the results will speak for themselves. So we'll look at the same, uh, the first study. Remember, both of these studies had identical methods. And so the first study, let's look at the results. And if you see here, you can see that there was a significant weight gain um, in the nandrolone group as compared to testosterone. So the um, uh, the, uh, it was almost double in the nandrolone group and the fat mass was negligible and the uh, gain was negligible in the nandrolone group whereas in the testosterone group there was a fairly significant increase. So this are, or, already shows that the gain in mass in nandrolone is double that of testosterone even at a lower dose. So let's look at the second study which again use the same method of nandrolone and testosterone compared to placebo. And if we look at the lean body, body mass gain, nandrolone gains double that of testosterone. And there was more intracellular water retention, but um, that's known to be caused by nandrolone. So even at a dose that was lower than that of testosterone, nandrolone seems to be far more anabolic and it supports this um, theory of uh, nandrolone's binding affinity to the receptors as compared to testosterone. And again, um, in, if you look at other studies um, where testosterone was used in 200 milligrams, they're often in patients who haven't trained and result in significant increases in body mass, which sometimes are comparable to the gains that nandrolone had caused in the first study I mentioned. But again, that was in trained individuals and they who had already been training for years and they still had a significant increase in mass at such a low dose. So it does support the fact that nandrolone is undoubtedly strong than testosterone. 
So whilst it is undoubtedly stronger, in my next video I'll be discussing the health effects of test of uh, Decker, and Decker is not safe. Whilst it is um, much stronger than testosterone, it's not as safe as testosterone, and can't be used for as long as testosterone and at as high a dose as testosterone. So it's all about risk versus reward. So whilst it is known that it's stronger, it, is it really worth the risk when you could use testosterone at a lower dose for a bit longer with minimal health effects? You won't gain as much size, but you'll still gain size and won't have these deleterious health outcomes. But that decision is up to you. I recommend you use neither, but uh, again, I cannot make that decision for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below if you've had experiences with these two compounds and what they were. And remember to like and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you in the next video.